Hey everyone, Christopher here, and I have something really, really special to share with you today. Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, we are in my survival Minecraft world, in my throne room, which I'm rather proud of. Uh, I kind of think that uh, everyone ought to have a throne room in their Minecraft world, especially if you write sci-fi fantasy the way I do. Uh, by the way, those uh, lapis blocks up there were a pain to collect. Minecraft really should have lapis slabs in the game, but uh, that's a conversation for another time. In any case, as I said, I have something really special to share with you. For the past few years, I have been aware of a group of very dedicated fans who have been working on an Allegasia-themed Minecraft server. I know, how cool is that, right? Now, when I first found out about this, I didn't have the time to tour the server. I was busy working on To Sleep in a Sea of Stars back then, and then The Fork, the Witch, and the Worm, and then To Sleep in a Sea of Stars again. Fortunately, both of those are finished. Uh, and a couple of months ago, uh, it was pretty late at night, and I was playing some Minecraft. In fact, I was working on this throne room right here. And I bopped over to Twitter, and one of the founders of the Allegasia server, a guy by the name of Jack, I believe he founded the server with his brother, uh, he invited me to take a tour. And I thought, what the heck, I'll do it. Now, I have, had never actually signed up onto a multiplayer Minecraft server in my life, and what a way to start. This server is incredible. In fact, words don't even do it justice, which is why I'm going to have to show you what they've been doing. These crazy folks, these amazing, wonderful, awesome, crazy folks have been recreating all of Allegasia in as close to possible of a one-to-one -one scale. It's, it's bonkers. Every single town, village, major location, it's all there and beautifully done, beautifully done. Um, I toured the server once and then I came back for a second tour about a month later and that this time, the second time, I recorded my visit and that's what I'm going to show with you. Uh, the thing is, though, there was so much to see. I had over three hours of footage and I still didn't see everything. So I have... Uh, edit this down as much as I could, but the video is still about 40 some minutes long, over 40 minutes long, and to chop it down any further would have uh, made it pretty much unwatchable. But I hope you enjoy visiting this version of Allegasia as much as I did. It really is amazing. Now, a couple of things to note. Uh, first of all, the server itself is called MC Allegasia, and I've put the info for it down in the description. So if you want to check it out yourself, you can. Second of all, the music for this video was done by another amazing fan by the name of Malta Wegman, and he has essentially set out to create a soundtrack for the in entire inheritance cycle. It's it's pretty bonkers, uh, and he has a ton of the tracks on his social media. He's releasing them uh, incredibly consistently. He has a, a huge work ethic and is just uh, doing some awesome, awesome stuff. So be sure to check his channel out as well. Uh, and then lastly, I had way too much fun editing this video. And as you will see, I had used just about every single transition I could, including this one and this one. And overall, the video is a little self-indulgent. I hope you forgive me. But how could it not be self-indulgent when I am getting to tour a virtual recreation of a world that I invented? I mean, it's surreal. It's crazy. It's it's awesome. And I know it was uh, kind of surreal for uh, the folks on the server to be touring it with me, the author. The author. So in any case, it was pretty awesome. I ooh, Dramatic lightning. In any case, it was awesome. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And without further ado... Let's go to Allegasia. And here we are at the Gualda Falls, looking out over Palancar Valley. And there's Carvajal, so close to how I imagined it. Down into the village, Sloan's Butcher Shop is here. I can't even begin to explain what it's like uh, seeing this, visiting this. It's like being in a dream, the Seven Sheaves. And even there, there's the Horn of an Urgul. And down the path to Aragon's farm, or rather, I should say, Garrow's farm, right there. And then further down the river. We're moving along so fast because there's so much to see. 
But that's the thing, there is so much to see. And one thing uh, that isn't clear from these brief snatches is that every house is finished off. Every house has an interior. Uh, here's Ristfak Bane at the end of Palankar Valley. <laughs> A foreboding tower, if ever I saw one. But no, every interior is finished for the most part. Every city, every town, every house has character. Uh, so much work and love has been put into these. Yeah, City of Sunan. So this is where uh, the Fork story with Murtag took place. Uh, this is far to the north. Look at all these houses. Uh, this is a video of superlatives. You will hear me saying again and again how amazed I am by the work that's put in. And again, I had to chop out so much. Yazawak. Derret. And look at this, Derret barely appears in the books, and we have a full town. Uh, my camera work is a little jerky at times because I had to record this on a laptop, so it's touchpad work for me. Tirum, these walls, that, that entrance gate, the houses. Uh, it feels like you could live here. And all of the smaller houses outside the walls, and there is the dragon wing slowly loading in the great ship that Roran and his companions took south. I know it feels like we're just uh, rushing through the cities, but trust me, there's so much more to come. I uh, just cannot wrap my head around the fact that the books have inspired this much love and excitement and devotion over the years. Uh, and I, I, I definitely found myself inspired uh, in small and large ways. Uh, look, visiting this server, you know, inspired to write future stories, inspired uh, <laughs> to uh, write some stories I hadn't imagined before. Ah, here we have the shop of Angela the Herbalist. And uh, I think, yeah, I think we had some more there, but uh, lots of bookcases in there. And this is Jode's house. Uh, and how do we know it's Jode's house? Well, we'll go on up here and up to the second or third story down to his room there's a bedroom Joe butler's room and then the master study master Joe's study i wouldn't mind a room like this with all these bookcases so tirum a fantastic city you can go into any one of these houses any one of them and see see them set up as if for the lives of the people living there i love this chandelier love the chandelier um and just sort of to prove the point, uh, you'll see me going into various look, various uh, structures at different times just to show uh, how amazingly designed all of this is. And now here's Gilead, a little different from how I imagined, but I like the low look of it. Um, that definitely fits what I had in my mind, and it has a very military bearing to it, which is as it should be. When I saw this town the first time, or city the first time, I think the walls were made out of melons, because that's one of the building materials they use with their uh, Minecraft World Edit, or whatever the program is, so that they can easily replace the, uh, once they're design done building the structure, they can easily replace it with patterns of material. Uh, so we can just imagine Sephira flying in here and ripping off the roof of the main uh, jail slash citadel there. But... I kind of like the city with melons, I have to admit, uh, melon walls. So here's Kantos, which uh, my memory grows hazy with time, but I don't think it actually appears in the story very much. But again, you know, every house has an interior, as if people live there, bookcases, bedrooms, all of that. Kantos, another large city that just, you know, is here to adorn the world. And then, of course, we have Drasiona. I always enjoyed writing about Drasiona. It's something I uh, think about quite often, returning to Drasiona and, and also what's happening in there. I have an entire book sort of set in the city and around the city. And coming through the gates here the way Aragon and Brom did. <laughs> you know, still gives me chills uh, even seeing this for the third or fourth time. And the cathedral itself, didn't they do an amazing job of this? Look at this, all spiky and black and menacing yeah the Razak would approve of this the priests of Hellgrind would approve of this 
lots of black stone the statues there. Yeah. And a good take at the organ over there. Now, of course, we know what's underneath Drasleona, uh, under the cathedral, there are the catacombs where Aragon and Arya and elves with them were ambushed and encountered lots of difficulties. So, yes, we have catacombs here. Uh, and I, I walked around on foot a little bit and then went into spectator mode to actually see how much was down here. Because there is a lot. There's a lot. There's just all these rooms underground, hidden rooms like this one, which feels like it's part of the sewer system. Or this one. This is the room where Aragon and Arya were captured with the amethysts. And, ah, gives me the creeps just to look at it. That was a... I wrote that scene because I learned the use of the word degloved in a medical sense. Uh which I don't recommend looking it up. And here we are, still in the catacombs. This this room we're coming up on kind of reminds me... Um, that's the one I'm thinking of. Reminds me, yes, of the beginning of Oblivion, when you uh, escape your cell and go through the dungeons, or s sewers, what have you, under the, the capital city. And uh, more tunnels, more tunnels. All of this is built under the city. Uh, it's really, really pretty awesome, and it's just so atmospheric and moody. I love the purple glass, purple stained glass. Uh, you'll enjoy my uh, awkward flying there. Now, of course, what's close to Drosleona? <laughs> what indeed. One of the only real downsides of Minecraft is uh, I had my render distance cranked up to the max, which was 40-some chunks, but even then, we had to wait for things to load in. And here we have it, Hellgrind. Now, I base this off of Shiprock in um, was that Nevada or New Mexico, and I think they did a great job of taking that inspiration and using it to make this design. Now, there's no base for the Razak inside of it yet, but that's still going to be built and is planned. So there it is, Drosleona. Look at that. What an amazing, amazing build. The exclamation points over some of the houses mean they still need a little bit more work on the inside, but... And hell grind. Yeah, here we are. Farthendur. I know you guys were waiting for this one. Up we go. Now, this isn't as tall, of course, as the actual Bjor Mountains, but it's tall enough. Tall enough. I think we started at pretty close to Y0, maybe Y20, and we're going up to build limit here. Um... I this was I had to do this I had to fly up to the top I've always wanted to fly to the top of the Bjorn Mountains, and uh, you'll see what I did here. You'll see what I did when I was here last time, during my first tour. We're coming up on this. This is the highest point of Farthendor, and what does it say? <laughs> Christopher was here. That's right. Now here's the mouth of Farthendor, and I'm gonna fly right on over it. And down, down we go. And you can see the ring of icicles around the mouth of the giant mountain. And there we are. There's Trondheim. A bit smaller than real life, but impressive nonetheless. And that's the thing. is Even if, uh, even though, of course, all of this was done in creative mode, uh, that doesn't, you know, take away from the work that was required. It, it is an enormous amount of work. Um, uh, here we're running into the limitations of Minecraft and my computer with waiting for all these chunks to load. But, oh, what a sight. What a sight. And, again, as a, to go back to the creative mode thing, I mean, just coming up with the designs is a ton of work. Placing them in the world, making sure that they look right, feel right, all of it is incredibly difficult. I did the math on the real Trondheim one time, and uh, the amount of square footage is simply staggering. You basically take the largest skyscraper you've ever seen, not the largest one ever, but something like the Empire State Building or uh, even bigger than that, and you lay it on the ground and that's essentially one slice of one story, the ground story, and then you have to, you know, spin that in a circle to get in just one floor <laughs> of of Trondheim. Yeah, the square footage is, is absolutely bonkers. You could live your entire life in Trondheim and you know, not know anything else, and uh, never need to know anything else. You could you could have entire groups of dwarves or peoples that never even see each other. Now you're seeing wool here in the walls because that's something they'll be replaced in the. Again, it's a 
or building material just as a placeholder. And here we come into the dragon hold at the top with Isidar Mithra. And we came up Valtorin along the endless slide. I really like this area. I could imagine hungering down up here and having a little uh, place to live. And in fact, you'll see what gave me the thought here. We have an enchanting table and we, we do. And we have this little cozy place and I could imagine Aragon in his bed there, while Sephira is out here, curled up, keeping an eye on things. Yeah, Tranji. <laughs> That's their building palette they have floating in the air. They're a cake, and they're putting down cake. Cake is important. The cake is a lie. Aberon. Now this is the capital of Surda, and is uh, mostly made of lots of sandstone, and uh, similar materials, which is fitting because it's so hot and the climate is different in Serta than it is in, say, Carva Hall. Again, look at the size of the city. Look at those walls. Look at the, the main castle slash citadel. Uh, this is work, and I'm not showing it. I'm not showing it, but every one of these buildings has something in them. Uh, I spent way too long sort of rabbiting around in these different structures during the tour. Uh, and just to prove the point, here I go into one of the houses just to just to show you that it's, show you that it's furnished. I love those those two towers there by the gate. Um, yeah, Aberon, great job there. And Aros, <laughs> another big city. That's the thing. Every time I thought we were done finding big cities in this server, they would surprise me with another one. And these are the canals that feed into the city, and that one right there that I'm aiming at is the one that Roran blew open during the Siege of Aros, using uh, flour, actually. Well, he didn't blow it open, he, he rammed it, but um, then the explosion happened on the inside. Yeah, and this, this, this whole palace here is really spectacular. Lots of quartz and sandstone. And I went through a bunch of the rooms, uh, but had to cut it out for the video or this again would have been a three hour long video it's just it's just jaw dropping as i said this is a video of superlatives and empty bedrooms it seems and chandeliers and look they even have bathrooms bathrooms with toilets or uh sort of more like outhouses but primitive toilets we'll say Yep, just popping into the walls here to see the fact that there are walkable, usable spaces, even in these giant walls. It's... <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It makes me think that I think about how much fun it would be to go onto this server and do a reading from different parts of the series in the locations from that series. If that's something you guys would be interested in, um, say something down below in the comments. Orthiad. This is a dwarven city. Now we're into the dwarven cities. I love what they've done with these. Um, the funny thing is Orthiad actually, so it's on the eastern, western half of the Bjor Mountains, and that's where the Urgles had their staging grounds before attacking Tronjim in Book 1. And in the first draft of Aragon, back when Aragon was named Kevin, I actually had him encounter a unicorn on the way to the Varden. But that aside, he... And a group of the Varden went on a scouting expedition from Tronjim in that version of the book, and they went through the Dwarven tunnels to Orthiad. And in that version of the book, Orthiad had a great, had a great pool of lava, and there were several shades on a pillar in the center of the lava directing all the Urgle armies around the lava pool. So it was kind of funny to see all this uh, lava here and these sculptures, because it is not so different from what I had in mind. But I mean, how amazing is this Dwarven city? And it, again, feels like something from, I was going to say it feels like from something uh, from Lord of the Rings, but I suppose it feels like something from the Inheritance Cycle. Uh, Burag. I can never remember if it's Burag or Burag. Burag, this is another Dwarven city. We have quite a few Dwarven cities, which are amazingly fitted out. So now in we go, I believe. Oh, yeah, I wanted to duck into the tower here just to see that, yes, there were things inside. It wasn't an empty shell. Too many creative builds are simply empty shelves. 
shells, not shelves, shells. All right, now let's go in. There's a banquet table here, a feast fit for a dwarven king. Now this is where shaders would have been nice. Um, as I was sa said though, I uh, had to record this on my laptop and my laptop did not like recording and playing Minecraft at the same time. So that's why the frame rates are a little janky at times and shaders uh, would have made this look even better, but I, my laptop couldn't handle it. Now Burrog is not as uh, fully finished off as some others, I think. We have these amazing, these awesome tunnels in here, which I really like the design of, but uh, the rooms at the end of them are mostly big empty rooms that are gonna be fitted out. Uh, in the future. And that's the thing is this server is still under development uh, and here's on the outside coming down just to again show the the level of detail and craft that has gone into this world. Uh, in fact, uh, is it, uh, yeah it's just, um, sorry I, I lose my train of thought <laughs> watching this but um, yeah Jack told me that uh, even he's surprised by what's on the server. Yeah, this is Galfney, and this is... Wow. Wow. But what else is there to say? A dwarven king to sit on the throne at this amazing location. Moria? What's Moria? <laughs> this is, this is just, yeah makes me want to go live there. I've always said that if I could go into Alagazia, I would go live with the dwarves because uh, they live lo a long time and they know to, how to have more fun than the elves. And heck, these days I have a beard like a dwarf, so that would work also. Yeah, there's so much I'm not showing you also in this location. All these little dwarven living areas and workstations and uh, mining areas. Uh, it, fortunately, the server is on peaceful, otherwise you'd have mobs spawning everywhere. This would be creeper heaven, but... Yeah, and here we have a statue of one of the dwarf gods. And off on a side tunnel. As I said, a nice little workstation. And it just, it just keeps going. It just keeps going and going, all of these tunnels. As you can see me typing there. So much wow. So much wow. Yeah, I spent a little extra flying around here because it was it was just so amazing. I feel like I could just hunker down in here and write my next book in one of these uh, <laughs> one of these nooks and crannies here. Now, as I was going around, let's see if it's here. Oh no, must be in Dalgon, another dwarven city. And what's cool is they each have their own style. They each have their own style, and partly because they're different. The dwarven gods on either side here. There are different builders uh, and designers. Now, when I visited here the first time, there was a giant, like, crystal heart hanging in the center of this room, but they're redesigning it, so uh, unfortunately I can't show that to you now. But look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Just look at this. You really could see a dragon in here, or dwarves. I have a I have a urge right now to start singing the Diggy Diggy Dwarf song, um, which if you're not familiar with Diggy Diggy Dwarf, go go look up the the animated version and also the heavy metal version because they're both uh, pr pretty awesome. Now what's cool is a lot of these cities don't appear in the books, but I feel as if the design, the builders here really did capture the spirit of the dwarves and have done an amazing job of. Um, extrapolating and, and expanding on what I had and so if I do write about these cities in the future uh, I, I may very well be thinking about some of this when I write that I yeah here are some of these dwarven huts look, look at this look at this little bed yeah I found cake the cake is good eat it with Steve's head the cake is not a lie put the cake back if you eat the cake speaking of eating we'll turn around here and another amazing banquet table and look at this they mirrored it they mirrored it in the ceiling for those of you not familiar with minecraft that means they built a duplicate of the tables up above uh, behind glass to make it look mirrored so that's 
actually kind of crazy amount of work. That's why I'm staring at the ceiling there. <laughs> and down we come to another dwarven king or god. I actually like to think it's a statue of a dwarven god. Maybe Helzog. And here we are at Tarnog, which is one of the, which is the dwarven city Aragon stopped along, uh, stopped at along the way to Elismira. The tiered fields there. Dragon heads pouring lava in. That's so cool. The floating actual ender dragon heads there were the other players who were taking me around. So this this staircase now, this is where the dwarves had their um, bas relief enameled sculpture, essentially. That's the history of their people, and that would have been along these walls. And the reason I had them use that uh, bas-relief technique, if I'm saying that correctly, I think I am, but... Uh, and the reason I had them enamel, uh, use enamel for it also, is that it's the only sort of paint that would last long enough for dwarven lifespans. And here we are in Elizmira, with nothing but custom trees everywhere you can see. And look at this, the Manoa tree there is so large that it's having trouble loading. I had difficulty showing uh, off Elismira because the there are so many trees they get in the way of actually seeing what's going on. Yes, yeah, so I was typing in love the trees. I do. Uh, one of the reasons I made Duelden Varden a pine forest is because traditionally elven forests are oak trees and deciduous trees and I grew up in the American West in the Rockies and I still live there and it's a, it's a harsh land and the trees are harsh and hardy and I like pine trees so and firs and all of those and so I really wanted to have an elven forest that used evergreens like that uh, so this is one of the one of the elven tree uh, tree houses you know grown and sung out of the tree and they're all over the place it's hard to tell here in this footage because uh, the branches get in the way but here's another one you can see almost every tree in this area has some sort of living area and I think Arya would have loved that with all the plants there, all the flowers and there's a little banquet area and there's all sorts of little easter eggs hidden everywhere, oh this is Runin's Forge, where she and Aragon made Brissinger together yeah look at the Manoa tree Look at that. That's, that is amazing. Actually, the branches could even go out even further, but the height, the height is perfectly to scale. Guess where we're going? We're flying out over the trees, and uh, I cut some of the journey, journey short, but the crags of Telnair. And there, right there, that spot. See where the path leads up to it? And we'll turn around. That's it, right there. That's where Oramis and Glader came, came flying up. I, I really, this is one of my favorite features on the server. It's such a stark feature, stark uh, formation. And, and it really is pretty much exactly how I imagined it from, uh, from the books. And this was uh, mostly hand built, I believe. <laughs> it took a ton of work to build it up from the ground and make it as long as it needs to. And here we are. Here we are at Ormus's hut. Down we come. You could just see Glader curled up outside while Ormus is inside. Yeah. We'll check the chest here. See what's in. Eh, nothing. Yeah. This is one of my favorite locations. I... It does. It feels like being inside my own brain or feeling visiting a dream, a dream from childhood. I mean, there's a, the reason I, you know, I wrote these books because I love the story and I love the characters and I love the world. And, and visiting all this makes me makes me want to go back to it. Sealthrim. Now, this Sealthrim never appeared in the books either, but look at the amount of work that was put into this. Uh, Every one of these houses is furnished, and there's a ton of them, and they have all have this unique design. Uh, 
Uh, there's an amphitheater in here, a little theater, which we'll see in a bit. Uh, a bunch of other halls and cool little fountains. I mean, this is... This is crazy. This, in, the, in the best possible way, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then this big central building. And of course I have to go inside just to see if, you know... Just to see if I can go inside. <laughs> okay, I was trying to go through a window there, so we'll, we'll pop it. Little we'll banquet table, lights, hallways, camera action. <laughs> um, there's a training area, which uh, I don't think we have time to see at the moment, but there's a little area where you can shoot at uh, armor stands. Here's the amphitheater, the outdoor theater, and they put on a little show for me when I was on the server. You can see a bit of it there. That's one of the players bopping around. And here we are at Head Earth, where Aragon sailed off at the end of Inheritance. And that ship right there is the elven ship he left on, the Talita. Which, for those of you who don't know, is the name of my mother. And uh, it's a very elvish sounding name. She was she was named for, for a star, actually. All right, Doru Areba on Vroengar. This, this, they just nailed. The ruins, the size of the buildings. You know, it fits what you would expect to see with dragons. So I, I'm just flying off here because I saw a few little buildings, which must have been like a, one of the ways onto the, into the central crater. So we'll fly on back. Yeah, look at this. This just tickles my heart. Of course, we um, have a giant skeleton here. And here we are, the skeleton of Belgabad, the great, great dragon. And you can see a statue of a dragon statue in that ruined building there. And then look, look, I found this the first time I came on the server. I knew exactly what this was, and I knew where to find it. The Rock of Kuthia. I could have cut this short, but I really didn't feel like it. So down we go, step by step. Now the vault itself is unfinished, but you can see the beginnings of what it'll be. Spirits. And of course, uh, Quarok, the dragon, would be here with the, the Eldenari and the, and the golden body. The Hadarak Desert. This one's this one again. The scale of this uh, whole build is amazing. It's not it's not finished yet either. But down here we have caves where the dragons would be nesting and laying eggs and basking in the summer heat and staying cool when it got too hot. Although I don't know, can it really get too hot for a dragon? They do breathe fire after all. So all of these caves would be for the dragons to live and that's something uh, I guess they're going to build out and put some cool stuff in there. But yeah, this, this almost reminds me of Monument Valley. If you've seen any of the old westerns, you, you, would have, you would have seen some footage of Monument Valley. But yeah, look at this, look at this. There are caves in each one of these. And, Again, Minecraft can't even, my computer can't even load all of this. I like the helpful arrow in the sky. That Aragon could have used that. How to find the Varda and follow this arrow. The Burning Plains. So this is definitely not finished yet. Uh, the blue is, I think blue wool or something is just a placeholder. Although I kind of like the, the blue. It gives it a cool look. Uh, Urubane slash Illyria is not finished yet, but it's the right shape. Uh, Bellatona, here we go, moving right along. Another fully built, large city. With a really nice castle in the center. And I would have spent longer in any one of these places, but as you can see, it just, 
<laughs> the whole video could have been in one of these cities. at Feinster. Yeah, my jaw was almost audibly dropping every time I was teleporting to a new location. And I love the different designs of each place too. Uh, they definitely put a lot of thought into the, the look of the different cities. And they don't feel copy and pasted, which is, which is impressive because they're, they're not. You know, visiting the server really made me think about the relationship between those who experience art and those who create it. Because all of these places live deeply in my mind, but in some ways it almost doesn't matter if other people don't share it. You know, it's, it would just be a very personal, private thing if it was my own imagining. Yeah, another city that doubts that doesn't appear in the books, and here it is, just completely imagined. Douth, by the name, the, by the way, the name of the city itself is a, is a joke, um, which I'm planning on building out a little bit more in a story at some point, but basically the elves named this location Douth, which in the ancient language means death, and when the human settlers came through and said, hey, what's this place came, what, what's this place called? They said, the elves said, death! And the human said, oh, okay, we'll call it death, we're settling here, and they didn't realize what it was meant. This, um, this little throne here is a secret one hidden underground at Douth. And uh, Narda. Here we are at Narda. Nice little village. And Deldorad. And Ilia Fion, which means Place of the Flowers. Another elven city, just with these amazing tree houses. And uh, some of these cool quartz buildings. And various other formations. But no, I, 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 I was definitely thinking about how it is when you create a piece of art and it goes into the world, and if it's successful, uh, all of these different people have different reactions to it, and different relationships with it that have really nothing to do with um, whoever it was that created that art. And, uh, you know, this server is sort of a an, an, uh, physical expression of that. And... Uh, I'm not quite sure how to feel about it, aside from grateful and amazed. Just sort of in awe, I suppose. This uh, Urkel village reminds me of the one from the Fork, the Witch, and the Worm, from the Worm story. It sort of has the, some of the same dimensions. Yes, and here's the Boar's Eye, which I believe this would not actually be possible in the most modern to create from scratch in the more modern versions of Minecraft because the, the water works differently, but uh, they can update without causing themselves too much trouble. You have a crashed ship to the ship there. And, I mean, how cool is this, right? <laughs> uh, kind of gives me the chills just looking at it. And Udin is one of the islands in the south, one of the southern isles. And I, I like how this one has a bit of a Mediterranean vineyard feel to it. Uh, I believe they mentioned some of the buildings here were made with older versions of Minecraft, so they're planning on coming through to update with the new block palette at some point, but I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. Eom is another uh, of the islands down there. This is where the cave with the floating crystals is. Uh, the cave itself is not built out, so I can't show you that, but a nice little village. We're going to swing around here. I'm not sure where we're going next. So you think we've seen everything, right? We've seen all the big cities. We've seen the Dwarven tunnels. We've seen Drosleona. It's like, how much more could there to be... Could there to be see... Eh, could there to be see... Eh, how much more could... I can't talk today. How much more could there be to see on the server? Well, here's Kawasta. This is... On the western coast, this is where Brahm is from. Remember, his family were, were illuminators of manuscripts. And this is where they're from. And, and this is probably one of the biggest cities in the entire server. 
can see me changing my modes, great game modes, so I can walk around on foot a little bit. Uh, and there's an entire section on behind the castle that's that's uh, has a dock area, and the castle itself is really cool. Yeah, just just taking this view, and then. There is a hidden library underneath the city, which uh, has a very difficult to find entrance. But look at this this cool thing. This is just you know was put in just uh, just to have something cool, and I love it. I love the cave like feel. I love all the bookcases, and this would be something neat to build in my own Minecraft world. But heck, it'd be something neat to build in the real world. Yeah. So that's Coasta. As I said, there's a dock area that you can walk around in. Asylum. This is a elven city, actually, by one of their mountains. And uh, I like this the trees over this banquet table here. And didn't spend too much time here, but uh, really another cool build. Great, great big castle. And here's Morzan's castle. Wonderful design for this. Just very, very moody, evocative, evil. <laughs> And uh, the, well, of course, we have an obsidian or blackstone throne there. And another Urgul village. I really like the look of this with these sort of tents and the hanging fabrics, which the knotted patterns which they make. Yeah, this is a good Urgul village. Edur Ithindra. This is the tower where Aragon met Tenga. Mysterious Tenga. Now this is a ruined elven tower. Kantos. Look at this. Another huge city that has been built. <laughs> Break and hold. Yeah, I, I was moving fast at this point. There was still so much. This is where Durgrind Dinjitim has their headquarters, where Oric was married and where the Forest of Stone is, or fairly close. Now, the Forest of Stone isn't in the, in the server yet, but they're also working on building that. This is, it has a really cool design to this. Um, this color palette feels very dwarfish to me. The Inner Sanctum of Morgothal. And Sithri. Sithri, uh, that's originally an elvish name, but humans live, live here now. Some cool roof shapes there. Yeah, at a certain point, uh, I don't want to say I got numb. Oh, I like this lion statue going around the server, but it, it was almost like too much of a good thing. I needed to take a break and and come back when I had more time to appreciate just how much was there. These are some more small villages. Nadendel, another Elven town. Houses scattered out through among the forest, among the trees. Petrovia. I had to have a Russian sounding name somewhere on the map. Don't ask me why, I just 15 year old, 16 year old me felt it was necessary. Petrovia. Um, I think I used all the other accent symbols, and so I just wanted to use the slash through the O at least once. I love the roofs here. This is just such a cool look for the city. And it's. The city itself is bigger than it first seems. Another cool windmill there. And all of these are positioned proportional to relative to each other. So like if you you can fly around the map from one city to the next and they're the proper distance and relationship to each other. So you could grab a horse and ride from Theronsford down up to Siunan or down to Drasiona and it would be the right distance. So yeah, this is still uh, Petrovia. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. But I'm the author, so I guess I can pronounce it however I want. Yeah. Picture perfect from, from the sky. Reevestone, another smaller village. And finally, the prologue. The ring is going to be where the explosion takes place. 
when Arya sends Saphira's egg away from Durza. And that's that's the server. Not everything, but a lot of it. Uh, I, I hope <laughs> I hope all of you watching are as amazed as I am. I think the larger fandom hasn't realized just how much has gone into this this world that they've been creating. And at the end of the tour, of course, we had to take a group picture in front of Brasiana. And once again, this reminds me of how great, how, how lucky and fortunate I am to have such amazing fans. It does nothing but inspire me to want to write more and do better as an author. But uh, yeah, none of this would have been possible without all of you. So thank you from the deepest part of my heart. Thank you all. And perhaps, perhaps we'll get to revisit Allegasia again in book form before too long. Wouldn't that be nice? I've been writing about spaceships and lasers and aliens for a long time. It would be nice to write about dragons again. These are all the contributors, uh, current contributors to MC Allegasia, so a big thank you to all of them. Thank you to you.